Hi, Mr. Robert. How are you? I'm great, Miss Wilson. How are you doing today? I'm feeling really good. The sun is shining and that makes me really happy. Makes me happy too. It puts me right in the green. Me too. Very calm and peaceful. Yeah. I've been thinking mm -hmm. about our math perseverance lesson and yeah. how that really connects to thinking of our math identity. Do you think you're a mathematician? Um, yes, I do. I have learned to think of myself as a mathematician. Yes, everybody is a mathematician because we use math every day. And one of the ways we're mathematicians is just counting in everyday life. So how yeah. are you a mathematician today? Uh, to, I have been a mathematician today so far um, by making coffee because I counted the scoops of coffee that I put into my coffee maker. And I was a mathematician today um, when I was waking up and I set my alarm and I hit the snooze button. And so I thought to myself, add nine minutes, add nine minutes, add nine minutes, because I hit the snooze alarm, so. How many times did you snooze? Um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> That's great that you do so much counting in your everyday life. Mathematicians count everyday objects like the steps or the number of birds chirping. I was a mathematician when I made cookies last night and had to measure ingredients. Oh, yummy. Did you save some for me? Yes. I will be sending you some salted chocolate chip cookies soon. Perfect. I can't wait. So this makes me think that our lesson today should focus on math identity. I have a great book about a mathematician who grew her math identity by counting every day and asking lots of questions. Excellent. I can't wait to hear the story. Let's get started. Today's math read aloud features a person who grew their math identity by counting every day and asking lots of questions. This person is Katherine Johnson. You may have heard the name from the movie Hidden Figures. She was a mathematician who helped astronauts land on the moon. Let's read to find out how Katherine Johnson grew her math identity in this book called A Computer Called Catherine, how Katherine Johnson helped put America on the moon. Written by Suzanne Slade and illustrated by Veronica Miller Jameson. Everywhere she went, Catherine counted. She counted her steps to church. She counted the plates on the dinner table. She even tried counting the stars in the sky. Most important of all, Catherine counted the days until she could start school. Finally, at age five, she followed her brother hundreds of steps to the two-room schoolhouse. An excellent student, Catherine devoured thick books and added numbers at the speed of light. So the teacher decided she would skip first grade and start in second. But Catherine was such a fast learner, she later skipped fifth grade too. And before you could say mathematician magician, she was a grade ahead of her older brother. Catherine loved math because it was easy to see if an answer was right or wrong. Meanwhile, most everyone in town was arguing about right and wrong. Some people said it was wrong for children with different skin colors to attend the same school. Others said it wasn't right for women to work as the same jobs as men. Their arguments seemed wrong to Catherine, as wrong as five plus five equals 12. She believed everyone should be treated the same. So she kept working hard in school and dreamed of a future when all people would have equal rights. Catherine finished eighth grade when she was only 10 years old, but her town didn't have a high school for black students. Determined to keep learning, she counted the dusty miles, 120 in all, as her family moved closer to a school she could attend. 
There she took an exciting math class called geometry. She learned how points and lines made shapes, triangles, trapezoids, and perfect parallelograms. And her love for math grew exponentially. That means it grew bigger and bigger. At 15, Catherine started college. She flew through every math class at West Virginia State, so a professor taught her harder classes, just for her. In advanced geometry, she plotted points on a graph. When she connected the points, they created a beautiful U-shaped curve called a parabola. It was love at first sight. After graduation, Catherine became a math teacher. Back then, people said women could only be teachers or nurses. Catherine knew that was wrong as wrong as 10 minus five equals three. She believed women could be anything, scientists, lawyers, or mathematicians. So she set out to prove it. Catherine discovered a research center in Virginia that was hiring women mathematicians. They were called computers because they made calculations that helped the men engineers design airplanes and flight plans. To Catherine, it added up to the perfect job. All day long, she punched buttons on a calculator, just like the other women. She solved long math problems, just like the other women. She wrote answers on a huge data sheet, just like the other women. But Catherine wasn't like the other women. She asked questions, lots of questions. What were her calculations used for? Why were they important? How did her answers help design airplanes and flights? The men engineers noticed the women who asked intelligent questions and how quickly she solved different math problems, difficult math problems. So they asked Catherine to join her space team. Its mission, send America's first astronaut into space. Catherine said yes. Then she discovered that women weren't allowed to attend the group meetings. She knew this was wrong, as wrong as five times five equals 20. So she asked if she could go. Women don't ever go to those, the engineers replied. Is there a law against it? Catherine asked. No. So Catherine showed up at the next meeting, ready to work. Astounded by her geometry skills, the team asked her to calculate when America's first space flight should blast off. Catherine agreed. But first she asked questions like, where should the rocket splash down? How high should it fly? When should it land? With that information, Catherine carefully computed the rocket's flight path, a beautiful U-shaped curve. Next, she worked backward to figure out the time it should blast off. Then she began counting the days until launch. On May 5th, 1961, Allard Shepard blasted off. Following Catherine's flight path, he soared into the silvery sky. 15 minutes later, he splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean, right on schedule and right on target. Catherine would go on to help the space program, including the famous astronaut, John Glenn. Even though she knew it was a difficult job, she worked really hard to make sure her calculations were accurate so that the astronauts could stay safe. She calculated and computed, she plotted and planned. She created a bold, brave path all the way to the moon and back. And so, on the day that the astronauts blasted off, Catherine watched. The rumbling rocket slowly rose above the ground, above the smoke, above the clouds, and then disappeared into ink black space. Four days later, as Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon, Catherine smiled and began to count. 
Katherine Johnson says, girls are capable of doing everything men are capable of doing. And if you want to know, ask a question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. And that is how Katherine Johnson grew her math identity and became a very important mathematician. How can you grow your math identity today? Hope to hear from you soon. All right, it's time for our math game now. The other day, Miss Wilson and her friend, Mr. David, taught you how to play pig, where you are trying to get to a certain number of points. You could play to 50 points, you could play to 100 points. You roll a dice, whatever number comes up, you add it to your total, and you keep on rolling until you decide you wanna put those points in your bank. When you put the points in your bank, they're yours to keep forever. But you could lose your points that are not in the bank if you spin a one, if you roll a one. If you roll a one, whatever points you have and have not put in the bank, you lose those points. So it's kind of a, a strategic game. Do I wanna keep on spinning and possibly lose my points, but I also want to get to 50 first before my opponent. So it's a fun game. So we're going to play pig again. I'm going to show you a different way to play pig. This time, instead of adding points, I'm going to subtract points. So I'm going to start at 50 points for both player one and player two. And we're going to try to get to zero. We're going to see which player gets to zero first. Now, the other day, Miss Wilson said, if you don't have dice hanging around, what you could do is you could take little pieces of paper and write all of the numbers from one to six. There's five. There's two. I've got all the numbers from one to six here inside of this bowl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull numbers from the bowl without looking. And um, I'm going to use that instead of using dice. All right. The other thing that I've got, well, I've got my score sheet here for player one and player two, all right? And what I'm going to put on the score sheet is whatever I decide to bank, whatever each player decides to bank, then I'm going to put it on the score sheet. And then the other thing that I've got is I've got a number grid from one to 50 because player number two is going to use this when player number two is subtracting. Player number one is gonna subtract without using the number grid, but this number grid is gonna help player number two subtract, all right? So I just wrote the numbers from one to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, and 41 to 50 on a sheet of paper. Easy, to, easy for you to do. All right, we're gonna start playing now, all right? Um, and we're gonna start off with player number one. And player number one is gonna Mix these numbers up and we get a two. All right, so um, player number one is going to decide to pull again. All right, so 50 minus two is 48. So I've got 48 right now. Um, a three. 48 minus three is 45. I think I'm gonna pull again. I'm feeling lucky. And a six. Uh, 45 minus six is 39. I think I'm gonna bank that. I'm gonna bank the 39. So player number one now has a score of 39 on my way to zero. I'm trying to get to zero. So I can never go back into the 40s. I have 39, I'm gonna try to, and. That 39 is mine to keep because I put it in the bank. All right, player number two. Player number two pulls a two. And so player number two is going to use this chart to help with the subtracting. We start at 50 and I'm going to subtract two. One, two. So I'm at 48. Um, I think I'm going to pull again. Put that back in there. And player number two pulled wah, wah, a one. And because I hadn't put that 48 in the bank, I go back to 50, all right? So player number two has right now 
nothing in the bank. Player number one is at 39. So player number two is really at 50, right? Because we're starting off at 50. All right, player number one. So player number one was at 39. And now player number one rolls, uh, pulls a four. 39 minus four equals 35. I'm gonna go again. So at 35, and now player number one pulls a one. Wah, wah. So player number one has to stay at 39 points. All right? Player number two pulls a two. Um, so just like the last time, starting at 50, subtract two, one, two. Player number two is at 48. Uh, I'm going to go one more time. One more time. <laughs> a one. Wah, wah. So player number two is back at 50. All right. Player number one, it's your turn. Player number one pulled a four. So I was at 39. 39 minus four equals 35. One more time. One more time. And a five. A five. So 35 minus five equals 30. I'm going to bank that. Player number one is going to bank that. So player number one is now at 30 points. And player number two is at 50 points. Let's see what player number two is going to do. Player number two got a two. Every time I've pulled a two for player number two, I pull a one right after. I'm going to bank that. So at 50 points, subtract two, one, two, still at 48. I'm going to bank those 48 points. And as of now, player number one has 30 points and player number two has 48 points. And I'm going to keep on going until one of them gets to zero. Let's see who wins. I'll see you later. Thanks for that new spin on the math game pig. Very curious to see which player wins. Since Mr. Robert used subtraction, let's count backwards for our movement break. We are going to strengthen our leg muscles. You need a chair or a box or a stool. You'll start by putting one leg on the chair and we'll lift the other egg leg, counting backwards from 500. You can put your hands behind you for support or for a challenge, have them out in front of you. All right, let's begin. 500, 450, 400, 350, 300, 250, 200, 150, 150, zero. Let's switch legs. Ready? Begin. 500. 450, 400, 350, 300, 250, 200, 150, 150, zero. If you are ready, try counting backwards from 1,000. Mm -hmm. Let's get ready for our math talk. Hey, how are you doing, Mr. Robert? I'm good, Miss Wilson. I love that story. Thank you. It's really powerful. It is. And can I tell you, it makes me want to watch Hidden Figures, yes. again, which I've already seen like three or four times, but I love that movie. But hearing Katherine Johnson's story again, I I'm going to watch the movie again tonight. Good movies. You can definitely watch more than once. Absolutely. How'd your math game go? Um, so I kept on playing. Player one and player two kept on playing. And the winner was uh, player number one. Player number one got to zero first. Wow. Um, but player number one was a good sport about it. Um, but you know what? One thing that I noticed that I would do differently next time, mm. start the game, when, I, when I start the game next time, I would put 50 points at the top for both player one and player two, just to kind of 
keep in mind, okay, this is where we're starting and we're trying to get to zero. When I played the game last time, I didn't have anything at the top. Um, I didn't show where we started from. So next time I would start, I would show where I'm starting from and then get down to zero. That's an excellent way to organize your work, Mr. Robert. I try. Live and learn. Live and learn. And we're all growing our math identity by learning. Absolutely. So in the read aloud, there was a section of the book that mentioned an equation and how Katherine Johnson knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. It was this equation. 10 minus 5 equals 3. Mm -hmm. So I thought for our math talk today, we could discuss how did Katherine Johnson know that this equation was wrong? Um, well, one thing that she might have thought was, um, you know, if she's got 10 and she takes away five, it doesn't leave three, it leaves five. So maybe she used her fingers or maybe she used manipulatives or maybe she just knew in her head that if you've got 10 and if you subtract five, one, two, three, four, five, it leaves five. Yes, that's an excellent way of thinking about it. So counting backwards from the number we start with, just like in your game. Yeah. I also wonder if she thought, well, equals three, hmm, five and three actually equal eight. They don't equal 10. Because right. when you add, you get the number you start with in subtraction. Yeah, that's true. That could have you been know, if she was thinking about it too. Yeah. You know, a great way to check your math work is by drawing a picture. So if you can't do this just by thinking of the numbers, if you draw your 10 dots and cross out five, just like you did with your fingers, you would also see that it equals five. That would work too. Part of being a mathematician is noticing and proving when answers are wrong, not just right. Because if you can do it forwards and backwards, you really understand how the numbers work. I'm gonna show another equation for our students at home so that they can discuss with their families how they know it is wrong and see what strategies they can come up with to find the correct answer. This was another equation in the read aloud. I remember that. Five plus five equals 12. What strategy will you use to prove that this is not correct? How did Katherine Johnson know? All right. Mr. Robert, thank you so much for this math lesson. Ms. Wilson, this was fun. Thank you for reminding us about the contributions of Katherine Johnson and reminding us that, you know what? We all are mathematicians in our daily lives. We are, we all count and we all ask questions. I'm really excited for our next math lesson with you. Yeah, you know what I think we're gonna do? What? I think we're gonna do some math and art. <gasps> I love math and art. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah, a couple of days. Sounds take good, care. you all take care.